In the east of the Democratic Republic of Congo, an insurgency by the rebel M23 group of army mutineers threatens to plunge that part of the country into urban conflict. The rebel leaders all used to fight with another armed group that had been folded into the army three years ago. And they say they mutinied to force the government to honor its agreement. But now a panel of UN investigators has accused Rwanda of backing M23, apparently to try and create a friendly semi-autonomous state just over the border. Rwanda's president, Paul Kagame, recently appeared at a parade to celebrate the country's 50th anniversary of independence. Although his country has repeatedly sent troops into the Congo in the past, he denies supporting anyone over the border now. We should not, we should not be accused of a mess in the DRC, period. If the DRC is messed up on the hands of its own leaders and lack of institutions, it should not be transferred to Rwanda. This is what I'm talking about. But the United Nations, which is helping fight off the M23 rebels, say they are too well equipped and too well trained to be just another bunch of Congolese soldiers. The crisis continues. The UN warns that it could spread into a regional conflict. Today on Talk to Al Jazeera, President Paul Kagame defends his record and explains why his country is only interested in peace in the Democratic Republic of Congo. President Paul Kagame, thank you very much for joining us on Talk to Al Jazeera. Thank you. Um, let's speak about um, the independence ceremony, which Independence Day ceremony, in which you gave a speech in which you said that for the last century, Africa lost immense opportunities, largely due to unbalanced relationships within the global community that were often predatory and even abusive in nature. And then you went on to say that new ways of perpetuating the old order have emerged in a subtle manner, often disguised, disguised, disguised as the defense of human rights, free speech, and international justice. What exactly did you mean by that? Well, I meant that what we see today, uh, the two aspects of these groups I was talking about, we've seen uh, in the current relationships uh, between our countries, African countries, that is Rwanda, the rest of the world, especially the developed world, two aspects of these groups I was talking about. One is a group that um, comes to Africa, comes to Rwanda, works with government, with the people of the country, help build the capacities so that people here are able to stand on their own, whether it is in terms of uh, development, social economic development specifically, or building institutions and so on and so forth. This is a good aspect, and we've seen a lot of that. Some even encourage investments and, you know, invest with the citizens, invest with the government, and the aim is to have the capacities built. The other aspect is of groups that uh, come to Rwanda, to Africa. They have a set of rules they have written, they believe in, and they must make everybody swallow that without even questioning. It's about uh, even, in fact, speak for the people of Africa or for Rwandans in a particular case, be beyond what you would expect is, is what they say is what defines you, even to the point that the governments in this uh, developed world will always make a reference. This is what so and so say. This is what they tell us. This is what, you know, so it becomes a fact, it becomes the truth, which is not necessarily the way. But you're talking about human rights groups there. Um, you're talking about the criticisms of, of human rights, free speech, international justice. You don't think those criticisms are legitimate? They are not, uh, especially when it comes to Rwanda. We've seen Why not? in the last 18 years, they have sung the same song about Rwanda. Well, it started actually for them as a failed state from 94. It has continued to be the same. And it's always a storyline that is being put the accusations, everything. It's, it's just about that. 
But the idea of, of a human rights group is to act as a watchdog, particularly in a place where a country's own citizens don't feel capable, don't feel safe speaking out. And there are all sorts of examples in Rwanda of, of people who've been stifled, at least according to them. Um, you know, yes, yes, according to them. Again, it is a question of whether you want to believe their story or believe them, and don't want to believe Rwandans, the majority of them, and their leaders. It's really a question of making a choice of what you want to believe, even when facts on the ground say different things. Um, Mr. President, I want to ask you also about Congo. This is an issue that has been repeated, has been coming up, particularly since we've seen the rebellion of a group known as M23 in Eastern Congo, a group of former soldiers who were part of the Congolese army, the FARDC, but who were also, prior to that, a part of the CNDP, another rebel group that was closely connected to Rwanda, um, and that was fighting the remnants of, of the FDLR, the, the militias that were responsible for the genocide. The group of there's been a group of experts report which has just uh, been released that's accused Rwanda of being actively involved in that rebellion. You have said repeatedly that Rwanda isn't involved. Why? Well, first of all, let me make a, a correction right from the start. CNDP, or what we had after that, were not fighting if there are for us, no. In fact, what we had in place was that Rwanda has been working with the DRC to actually fight FDRR. That's what we saw in the recent years. If you go around 2008-2009, this has progressed very well. And in fact, we were comfortable with that arrangement and, and we are moving on quite well. Even though some of these people that talk so much about human rights and other things were actually uncomfortable. They always did not like the fact that Rwanda and the, Bur and, and the DRC were working together. That's a, that's a big problem. But can I, can I just put Let me answer the okay. questions you raised. So we are not involved in the situation in Congo. And I think, in fact, the most important thing is there is a need for people to start looking at the situation differently because we have had this situation now for nearly 18 years. The rest of the world wants to be seen to be helping on resolving the problems in the Congo or best in the Congo that affect us. But they always have come out with the same approach, the same results, and they are not ready to change the same approach uh, that they have applied for so long that has had no good results and expect a different outcome. So this is where we have a problem. And the moment they start looking at these problems as basically Congolese problems and stop attributing problems in the Congo to people from outside or to Rwanda in particular, maybe we may have a better outcome. But President Kagame, I just want to challenge you on this because it's a bit difficult to believe. Go ahead. It's a bit difficult to believe that Rwanda isn't involved because Ru there are many thousands of Rwandan refugees still in Congo. That the CNDP, um, or that you had your own troops inside Rwanda for some years after the genocide. The CNDP includes many officers that served in the RPF. Your own forces under you, um, who are now involved in the, in this rebellion. Um, the, there are many Rwandophone people living there, culturally, ethnically, linguistically, socially, geographically. That region is closer to Kigali than it is to Kinshasa. Well, I, can, so see, I can see then where you, you, you are starting from and where those who make those reports are starting from. They are exactly starting from what you said and you make a conclusion as if that is a fact of Rwanda's involvement. But let me again correct you. It's not those fighters of CNDP only that had association with Rwanda or Rwandan military. Even those in the government today were part of <laughs> that, precisely, right from the top. There is not a single person in the DRC, in the government, 
that we did not have association with. So wh why, why select and say, no, these were the ones who were in the military, they were the secondary. I think don't forget one thing. It depends on where you want to start your analysis uh, and in terms of historical perspective. Rwanda is not responsible for the present situation, nor is it responsible for the whole history that has Rwandophones in DRC. It's as if you are saying for Rwandophones to be in DRC, it is actually Rwanda's problem or it caused that problem. You even imply that in what you are saying, because how do we continue bearing this responsibility of Rwandophones in DRC or whatever they do wrong or whatever they don't do or what, how, how can it be keep mm. coming to us? I'm not, I'm not suggesting that Rwanda is responsible. What I'm challenging you on is the idea that Rwanda is not involved. I mean, let's take someone like... Yes, but that Rwanda. doesn't explain how Rwanda is involved. That's why I'm bringing out the historical perspective of these but issues you've raised. But in a way, Rwanda cannot not be involved. I mean, let's take the case of someone like Laurent Nkunda. Who so was the, you are the really making ex extrapolation, then I can see. It's, it's different from having facts or evidence. It's just about saying, you know, you can't have Rwanda phones there and you are not there because you are concerned. No, no, no. This is what you are saying. You, you mentioned the specific details, and, or the lack of what you said were specific details of Rwanda's involvement in, in, in Congo. You see, there is, no, there is no evidence, there are no facts, because it is not happening. Even what is being said in the report you talked about, by the way. Well, the monitoring group report says that um, they interviewed nearly over 80 deserters of FARDC, that's Congolese Army Mutinies, um, and Congolese armed groups, including from M23. They said they interviewed 31 Rwandan nationals who were involved with M23. They said the group has photographed weapons and military equipment found in arms caches have on the battlefield. Have you seen those photographs? And obtained official documents. Have you seen documents. those photographs? Yes, I have. Those photographs? No, <laughs> I think well, you, know, you, the are not, you are not well, the being open. The, well, the photographs are in the report. You are not being honest in, but, in the fact. But President Kigami, the photographs are in the report. No, 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 no. no. The, the report, the report maybe, says... Maybe, maybe, maybe the, the, anyway, the, let me it, tell you this. Maybe I may be arguing a, 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 a case that I don't understand. Let me tell you. This report that is talked about. Again, you see... The, I don't doubt people's capacity and, and intellectual ability to, to grasp things, but I doubt their intention. This report that is talked about is it's only the story of the RSC government, it's the story of these so called groups in the, uh, there, it's the story of these uh, fictitious people who were grabbed from M23, we don't know, and so there is only one element that is very clear in showing how flawed this is. Do you know that nobody asked Rwanda? Nobody told Rwanda anything. We don't know about the report. This is absurd. This is absolutely ridiculous. Nobody has raised any of these issues with us. The report was written behind our backs. It is as if it was written in secret. And we are being accused, but the other parties that are involved are aware of it, and they are the source of these accusations. But the report contains no, very no. specific details. Do you get this yeah. point? I, I, no, I understand about. that. I understand. Yes. Why, why would it come to this? Well, what the why would it come to this point? Well, I don't know. I mean, you're, you're you should know have, because you're you interested in these questions being asked and answers being found. But the the, the report contains what it says. To me, is it is a fictitious report. When you keep talking about the report, the report, I don't understand the report. The report so has nothing. It must be having no evidence because nothing is happening. Let me tell you, uh, even in the level, just let, let me use a bit of common sense here. Let's look at this. Looking at the level where this whole fighting is looking at the whole first of all weapons do these people even need weapons they've been deserting with the weapons what weapons do they need do we have weapons to throw around just anyhow give people weapons that they don't even need or they haven't asked for 
they've been getting weapons from government because they are coming from government forces and moving with weapons. I don't have to give anybody weapons. It doesn't make sense. Secondly, this so-called rebellion, in fact, stands for nothing for us. If somebody just tried to think reasonably, what would Rwanda be looking for in this mess? Previously, we are working with the government. We are doing what we needed to do with the authorization, working together. What else would we be looking for? But if you have a situation where Eastern Congo is out of control, and clearly Kinshasa has very, very little control over what's happening in that region, even over their own military officers. So yes. I, I thought that's what Monusco went there to do. I thought that's what the, the, the UN force was there to do, to fill that gap, to help the government. So how, how do you ignore government, Monusco, all of these organizations they are trying to help, and just people turn and blame the government of Rwanda for anything? Well, but the, 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 this is the, report, the report suggests, the report implies that there is an attempt to create a, a, a semi-autonomous, if not an independent, region in, in the east of... No, east but honestly, this well, is just, you know, people keep... <laughs> it, it, this you know, is and then what? Because... Well, they're quoting officers, they're quoting officers who are quoting... They are, you see, this, this, is, this is what we shouldn't maybe waste so much time on. They are, they are, they, I don't know who these are. And but, <laughs> look, it's the same old story for the last 20 years. We're just President having Khan, there, what there. Said, but What you've said is that Rwanda has no interest in, in instability in, in Eastern Congo. Not at all. And that's Absolutely. very clear. Yes. And you also said that if the, the, the trying the same thing over again has failed to produce different results, then maybe it is time to try something different. Now, clearly, Kinshasa has very little control and has been apparently been losing control over I should over not the be accused of that. This is what I'm saying. No, no, I'm not saying that you are. I'm That's what we are accused of. of. No, no, no. We just, should just not, well, we should not be question. accused of a mess in the DRC, period. If the DRC is messed up on the hands of its own leaders and lack of institutions, it should not be transferred to Rwanda. This is what I'm talking about. By anybody. So what is the solution then? How, the solution, how does this, how does this those who are there trying to solve the problem should tell us what they are doing in the first place. You have all these so-called groups you are talking about. But surely you have some that ideas. That are there. First of all, I, I'm just using this as a starting point. You have the whole world in Congo purportedly doing whatever they are doing and finding solutions. They should be the ones to be asked, not me. For me, the way I thought we would resolve these problems was what we are doing. We are working with the DRC. That's, that's, and, and for us, it also was associated with our interest of dealing with our security problem that originates from Congo. So we begged, we asked the DRC government to allow us to work with them to uproot that problem. And by extension, they would also, I think, get relief from this extra problem they have over and above what they already have of their own. This is the way we approached it. And before it is two, three years old, the whole thing is dead with a different... Now, I think somebody manufactured some stories to say, oh, Rwanda, you know, is trying to do this, and the whole thing flares up. But there is nothing we can point to and trace for a fact that has originated Rwanda from Rwanda for this problem. Absolutely nothing. The same people there in DRC who have failed, failed to deal with the issues they claim they went there to deal with are the ones making these accusations. Are they running away from their own failures? I should mm. note we, Rwanda has its own problems to deal with. We don't want to bear Congo's problems. We can only work with Congo to address issues that affect both of us. But we cannot address problems of Congo. But the problems of Congo are clearly going to influence well, Rwanda. We're going to that's that's what I become have a said. problem. In that's Rwanda. why we have been open to working with them. I have said that. That's why we have been working with them. That's why actually we preferred direct engagement with them, which we have been doing. Now somebody is 
turning it upside down so in some way we don't understand. So what is the solution then? Is it for the Congolese army to reintegrate M23 back into them, into their country army? Is it part is of the problem, but that's only a small part of the problem. And what the is problem the is the wider governance issue of such a country that has such a complexities. It's not by, you see, this is the whole problem. <laughs> if you look at what happened, say, in the case of Rurang Honda, you were talking about a while ago. Some people had believed that if he was out of the situation, the problems would be over. And by the way, even at that time, in our discussions, we were warning them that they probably they are having it wrong. You don't deal with just one person in a situation like that and think you have resolved the problem. You need to look beyond dealing with one person or another, or another the next day. It's a systemic problem. It's not a one person's problem. But we are there massaging this problem, you know, applying these, you know, things that don't really make sense. And thinking we can close our eyes and the next day we find a solution. And this is where we are finding a problem as Rwanda, that we are there to always be used as a pretext for every development of this nature that takes place there. Well, how worried are you that this, pro this, this conflict might escalate and, and draw Rwanda in then? I, I don't see how it draws Rwanda in well, there there's beyond a conflict. the accusation. No, we, we well, there's a conflict right on your borders. And it is, and yes. We will come to a point where we just guard our border and deal with our problems. And if anything crosses the border, we deal with it. And if Rwanda found communities, refugee communities in Rwanda? Well, but Rwanda found communities, again, you see, this is the whole oh, distortion it, of it. It, 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 you, it. You are saying it as if Rwanda found communities are Rwanda's problems. Rwanda found communities are Congolese. Uh, uh, this is the point of departure that but messes up the whole understanding. But, but, the, but Rwanda had troops no, in Congo Rwanda to phone, deal with... Are Rwanda found communities Congolese or not? They're this Congolese, but there are also uh -huh. many Rwandans. They should be treated as such, first of all. But the FDLR... But we have many Rwandophones living in other countries, and we haven't had problems with that. But you sent your own troops after FDLR. Yeah, but you are now so mixing up these issues. Well, yes, not. FDLR yeah. and Rwandophones are two different things. Rwandophones are Congolese. FDR are Rwandese. So you, you keep mixing them up and bring the... If you want to bring the history as it were, you are referring to the past so much, talk about 50, 60, 100 years now, if that's what you want to talk about. Don't conveniently keep going to some history and then that brings in Rwanda. No, Rwanda, if you will, went in long ago. How these people became Congolese. If you want to talk about that, let's talk about that. All I'm suggesting is that all I'm suggesting is that to say that Rwanda has no has no interest in it. No, or no, has no, no. Nobody said it has no interest in it because that's why I told you we are working with the Congo. We've been working with the Congo to address problems that affect them, that also affect us. This is what I said. What I don't accept and agree with. I don't agree with that, and I don't agree with these accusations is to say that, say, for a current problem of groups in Congo fighting, Rwanda is directly involved in that fighting, is helped being one side in the fighting. No. This is what I'm saying. And if you look at now the, carefully, uh, if you've been following up on this, which I think you are, there are more groups fighting in Congo than these so-called M23 you are talking about. Now, maybe tomorrow we're also going to be accused, no, the, 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 the M23 was not enough. Now Rwanda is helping uh, other tribes of Congo to do this. This, this is what one thing keeps coming and leading to another, even falsely. And this is what I'm talking about. This being entire Rwanda's uh, uh, DRC problem, which they must really sit down and try to address. Now, if they want other people to help, like maybe they are already helping, like we were doing when we were working with the DRC, then they are very free to do that. 
and maybe that is helpful. But I don't want this problem to look as if it is now Rwanda fighting DRC. No, that's not true. Okay, President Paul Kagami, thank you very much for coming to Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.